Oh, hey guys, it's Hayden here. Welcome to another Road to the SATs video. In this series, we are preparing you for your upcoming SATs exam so you can smash them. Get four marks if you want, why not? Easy, breeze for you. Anyway, today we're looking at the GPS paper. We're thinking about word families, all right? So here's my first question to do with word families and we'll, we'll draw out some learning as we go. We'll explore this question type fully so that you can smash it in your tests. And the question says, which pair of words are antonyms. Now antonyms, if you've forgotten, are words with opposite meaning, which is different to synonyms, which are words with similar meaning. So technically antonym is an antonym of synonym. Get it? Because the opposite meanings and anyway, whatever. So using that knowledge, have a go at this question, which pair of words would be antonyms? All right, so it's not the first two, okay? Marine and submarine. Submarine isn't the opposite of marine. In fact, submarine, I guess, would be the opposite of like a, a ship that sails on the water, if you're gonna really think about it. It's not a marine though. So these aren't opposites, that doesn't work. Unicycle and bicycle, that's the biggest trap in here. They are not opposites, guys. One wheel and two wheel, yeah, they're different, but they're not opposites, are they? Think about it. One wheel and two wheel, I don't know. What, what would be the opposite of a bicycle? I don't even know. Can you even get the opposite of a bicycle? It doesn't really make sense. The next one is our answer. So when we use the prefix im, okay, this is a prefix. When we use the prefix im and we add it to a root word like proper, it gives it its opposite meaning. So that's what we were looking for, okay? So feel free to write that down. Synonyms have similar meaning. I always think of the S. That's just what reminds me when I forget. Synonyms, similar, that's how I think of it. And antonyms are words with opposite meaning. So thinking about prefixes a bit more, this question says add a different prefix to each word to form its antonym. So kind of like how we just put im in front of proper to make it its opposite meaning. What antonyms can you make by adding prefixes to these three words? Have a go. So the first one we were looking for here was dis. When we say we're being dishonest, it's the opposite of being honest. For separable, we put inseparable, okay? When, something's in, when some, some things are inseparable, then we're saying that we can't separate them. When something is separable, we're saying we can separate them, so it changes the meaning there. And finally, noticeable becomes unnoticeable, okay? If something's unnoticeable, you don't know it's there. If something's noticeable, it might be right in your face. You can see it really easily. So there we are, you gotta learn these. Now it's worth just going through and thinking about all the different prefixes that maybe you could you could think of. So two bits, two more uh, bits of vocab for you to write down, I guess. Prefix is, is the bit that's added before the root word. And a suffix, because you might be thinking, hey, there's another thing here, isn't there? Yeah, suffixes are when you add something after the root word. So bear that in mind throughout this word family little lesson here. Let's do a couple more prefix questions, shall we? So this one is a, a really common type of question you see in the SATs. It says, draw a line to match each prefix to a word to make four different words. Use each prefix only once. I like these ones because normally, if it's, a, if it's a good question, you'll be able to link one of these prefixes to more than one word. So you actually have to think about, well, all four have got to be linked up, so which one shall I choose? Maybe that happens in this one, maybe it doesn't, but I want you to have a go. Which prefix goes with which word? Okay, so if you put in to mature, you would be incorrect. <laughs> oh, these jokes are just not... Anyway, immature is what we really were looking for, okay? Immature is the opposite of mature. Incorrect is the opposite of uh, being correct. Now we've got last two, we've got miss and end. So N and miss. Now enable is to allow someone to do something. I'm gonna enable you to pass your test by watching my videos, <laughs> get it? And misfortune is kind of like the opposite of fortune. If you've had some misfortune, it kind of means like you've had a bit of bad luck, you know, something, something rubbish has happened. So there we are, I've got a nice little crisscross pattern there as we typically see. Another one for you, this type of question, what does the prefix multi mean? in the words multicultural, multipurpose, and multicolored. So it's not about linking words now, it's more about, okay, what does this prefix actually do? Earlier on, we looked at im, and we know it gave us opposite meaning. What does multi do in these words? Okay, let's think about it. Multicultural, it means lots of cultures. Multipurpose, it means that it can do lots of things. And multicolored means lots of colors, doesn't it? Okay, so it's not about some, it's not even about a few and it's not about all, it's about many. You've got to get the right word here. All would be different. Multicolor doesn't mean every color in the world. Multicultural also doesn't mean few colors. We generally use the word multi when it's more than two. 
okay? If it was just two, we might use the prefix by to be to mean two, okay? But multi normally means quite a lot, okay? So few and many will probably be good ones, but many is the best, um, the best answer here. Quite a tricky question, actually. All right, the prefix re, I reckon you'll get this one, can be added to the root word play to make the word replay. What is the meaning of the word replay? So unlike the last question, it's not about the meaning of just just the, the prefix. It's like when this prefix is added to play, what does this word actually specifically mean? Have a go. Okay, so when you use re, what you're saying is do it again. Okay, if I recook something, it means I've already cooked it once and now I'm doing it again. If I reheat my dinner in the microwave, it's because my dinner was heated once when it was cooked and now I'm reheating it, I'm doing it again. So replay means to play again. That was the key word we were looking for there, which explains the meaning of re. All right, onto some suffixes then. So I've just told you suffixes go on the end of the word. So this is a great question. It says add a suffix to the words in the boxes to complete the sentences. So you've got to use the root word equal and addition, but add something on the end of them to make them work in the sentence that they're in. Have a go. I've sat there for many years in schools watching children go, oh, I just, I'm not too sure, I'm not too sure. They might get one of them and get stuck normally on this one here. So our school believes in equal for all pupils. A lot of children would go, oh, equalness? Equalness, is that a word? And what they're not thinking of is sometimes the suffix kind of changes how the word sounds a little bit because the answer is equality, okay? So it's equal, equal, rather than equal, it becomes equal. So that kind of a little bit of a sound change is usually what throws people off. So just bear that in mind in your test. Maybe the sounds change a bit, which is why you're not thinking of the answer. And this one, normally people find this one a bit easier. So addition becomes additional with AL on the end. We took additional clothing in case it turned cold. Now worth saying this, if you spell either word wrong, even by one letter, you won't get the mark. If you only put one D in additional, you won't get the mark, okay? They're really picky with spelling because they've given you the root word and they want to know if you can spell, because it is a GPS paper, S for spelling, they want to know if you can spell the suffix as well. Okay, let's talk about word families. This question says, complete each sentence with a word from the same word family as proud. So what does that mean? I'll tell you what, have a go at this question first and then we'll talk about it. So when we're talking about word families, we're literally talking about other words that could be made by maybe adding prefixes, suffixes, maybe even thinking about the tense or the verb form that it's, if it's a verb. But they, but they all mean proud. They have the same meaning as, as proud, right? It's all from the same root word. So we something represented our school in the competition. We kind of just did this with the last question, didn't we? What we need to do is use a word from the word family of proud. And this time I'm going to put proudly. All right, we proudly represented our school in the competition because that's the only thing that works there. It has to be this L-Y version of the word. And the second one though, same, same root word, we took proud in representing our school in the competition. What works there? This is again where children normally get stuck. And I think there's a pattern here because the answer is pride. We took pride. Pride comes from the word proud, doesn't it? It, it, it is from that root word. It's just a different word, verb form. We took pride in representing our school in the competition, but it sounds different to the original root word, just like that last one. When it sounds different, normally we get a bit more confused. So just bear that in mind, because it probably will happen in your test as well. So there we are, a quick reminder there, if you wanna write anything down, feel free, but I'm gonna move on. So word families can be created from the root word without completely changing the meaning. Friend, befriend, unfriendly, friends. And tell you what, you could probably think of another five words that you could make from the root word friend. But here we go, let's practice this a bit more. A few more of these examples, okay? So complete the sentence by writing the word formed from the root word music on each line. So it has to have, it has to be from the word family, music, and fit these sentences. Have a go. Every member of the Jones family was music. Was musician, was musical, yeah? That works, doesn't it? I've added my suffix on. But only Mr. Jones was a professional musician. Now, because I said musician out loud, that really did come to me quite easily, okay? Musician is what we're looking for. The job to be a musician. And there we go. You'd have to get both of those to get one mark in the actual sats. Here's another one. This time you can read it. The elderly man thanks Lily for her kind 
when she helped him onto the bus. So what word fits there? Sometimes just reading it out loud, you can just hear it, can't you? It's kindness. Thanked her for her kindness. The noun kindness is what's being thanked for. Zara didn't mean to be something kind, but she still hurt her sister's feelings. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Because if we put kind here, it would make sense grammatically, but it wouldn't make sense in the context of the sentence. So we do really have to pay attention to what it's saying. Zara didn't mean to be kind, but she still hurt her sister's feelings. You don't hurt someone's feelings by being kind, do you? It doesn't make any sense. You hurt someone's feelings by being unkind. And that's what we're looking for there. The context of the sentence for the first time there made a real difference, didn't it? To the word we actually chose. All right, here's another one. This time the word family is from the root word memory. The actors had to memory their lines before they performed in the school play. Give yourself a pat on the back if you put memorize. That is how you spell memorize. It's not with a Z, guys, unless you're watching this from America. Fair play, it's with a Z. But in the UK, for your SAS, it's with an S. All right, memorize has to be spelled correctly. I, it was a something occasion once they would, one they would never forget. What do you describe an occasion that you can remember really well? You call it memorable. So look, both of these had M-E-M-O-R in them. We dropped the Y and we added two different suffixes on them to make them fit in our sentences. Without a bit of knowledge of these words, it is tricky. You know, if you've never heard the word memorable, it's going to be hard for you to do that. But that is what this test is really testing you on. Okay, another one of these then. A little bit of a different format this time. Look, it says complete the sentence below with a noun formed from the word invent. You can kind of ignore this and just think what you know, go back to word family and think what just, just what works there with the word invent, the root word invent, what even works here. Of course, when you make something, you're an inventor because you are creating inventions, right? So the engineer thought her latest invention would solve the problem or maybe even the latest inventions would solve the problem. You could get away of using both there. The official answer uh, in the actual SATs this year was just the word invention. Okay, these words are part of a word family. This is a really interesting way of doing it, isn't it, guys? So this time it's not saying, Here, here's the root word and you've got to write another word from the family. It's kind of giving you the family this time and it's saying write one more word that would belong to this word family. What can you think of? What even is the root to this word? So hopefully you've noticed that the root here is this circ idea, right? You think of circumnavigate means going around the world. A circle goes around, a circus travels around the place. It's all about this idea of like the rounding off, okay? So I'm trying to think of using circ in my own in my own word. And the first thing that comes to mind, there are multiple answers here. I wonder what you put. Maybe you can leave a comment below of what you put is circular. So let me know down below, did you think of circular? Or did you think of something else? Because there are other answers. I wonder if anyone can find all of them. Because I don't know all of them right now off the top of my head. But I bet someone in the comments will say, oh, here's all of the root words you could make with circ. And, I, and I, my guess would be there's probably six or seven or eight. I don't know. To be honest with you, let me know. Okay, guys, we're getting the idea. Let's finish up. We've got a couple of questions left. And I'm going to leave you with one to do. And actually leave me another comment in the, in the comments with the answer. But first of all, let's just have a look at these types of questions. It says, what does the root word graph mean in the word family? So it gives you the full word family. And it's asking you what the root word actually means. What meaning did it originally have? Well, let's think about it, right? Look, what, is, what, is it, what are these things? What are they? Autograph is when you write something, isn't it? Photograph is, is an, an image, okay? A picture. Paragraph is writing. Graphics is normally when you're drawing something, some sort of image that you're drawing. So if we look at this, it's not about moving pictures like a, like a film, like motion. That's a bit different. Writing or drawing, that kind of summarizes everything we just said, doesn't it? It's either to do with drawing or it's to do with writing. Colorful and bright is just describing things. It's not that. And in a group, I don't think so. I don't think anything really here has to do with being in a group. I guess paragraph, a group of words. It's not the best link in the world. So there we are, writing or drawing. Just go through each word in your mind and think, what does each one mean? And then maybe a theme will jump out at you. Okay, another one, exactly the same. What does the root word struct mean in this family? So if we look at them, destruction is about destroying something. Structure is just like about 
construct building something right a building so when you deconstruct something it's already built structure is something that is built and reconstruct means to rebuild something so all of these are to do with buildings aren't they you can't de destruct something if it's not built in the first place so hopefully we can see here that the root word to all of them is build really good traps here because this kind of links you to break doesn't it makes you think about that whereas build is actually the root word to all of them all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to leave you with a with a, a question what i saved the hardest or last i saw this one from a very long time in the sats a uh, very long time ago and i thought i'm saving that till the end so if you think you can this might be a bit too tricky for you but if you think you can solve this let me know in the comments below which two words which pair of words belong to the same word family there are some tricks in here so be extremely careful guys there were so many more videos coming your way and so many more, so many already released. So do check them out. Like, subscribe, leave a comment below, help us reach other people. I can't wait to see you in the next one.